so we'll continue the topic on how to estimate the sample size and the power of a test now here in the sample size determination again we're going to choose the understanding that it's still going to be a two-sided test so there is no one-sided test in pay t test and do a two sample independent test so here when you calculate the value so you have two different sample means you have mu1 and you have mu2 notice that these are alternative means of the two samples so you have mu1 and sigma1 square and you have mu2 and sigma2 square so notice the two values now to calculate the sample size so the formula for m becomes sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square into z 1 minus alpha by 2 plus z 1 minus beta square divided by delta square. So here delta represents modulus of mu 2 minus mu 1. So remember that this delta should always be greater than or equal to 0. So this should always be greater than or equal to 0. Now, so let's take a simple example. So here you have H0 which says mu1 equal to mu2 and H1 says mu1 not equal to mu2. So they are asking you to find, so they have mu1 and sigma1 square, mu2 and sigma2 square. So how can we estimate the sample size? So again, the same, the n becomes. So you have the sample size. So that becomes sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square into z1 minus alpha by 2 plus z1 minus beta square by modulus of mu 2 minus mu 1 square or delta square. Now, So in this data, so we're going to use, so we're going to use this problem data and uh, we're going to use this problems data to determine the sample, the sample size required. So here we need x on bar, s on bar, s2, so let's take this data. use this data so here in place of s1 we will consider this as sigma 1 and this is sigma 2 so x1 bar and x2 bar we will consider it as mu 1 and this as mu 2 so the first thing we want to find is delta which is modulus of mu 2 minus mu 1 so that becomes modulus of 127.44 minus 132.86 so let's use a calculator so we have 127.44 minus 132.86 so that gives you a modulus value of minus 5.42 so because it's a modulus value so it becomes positive so 5.42 so we have delta as 5.42 for our consideration so let us assume that alpha value is 0 0.05 and 1 minus beta is 80 percent so which is 0 0.80 so we have the n value that becomes sigma 1 square plus sigma 2 square into z 1 minus alpha by 2 plus z 1 minus beta square by delta square so here we want two values one is z 1 minus alpha by 2 so which is z 1 minus 0 0.05 by 2 so which becomes 0 0.975 so this value is 1.96 so you can check the table and find this value so the other value is z 1 minus beta so which is z 0 0.80 so which becomes 0 0.84 so you can use the table and find the value 
So sigma 1 square is 15.34 square plus 18.23 square into zero point. So 1.96 plus 0 0.84 square divided by delta is 5.42 square. So you end up with a value of 151.49. So round up the value of the sample size. So you end up with n equal to 152. So this is the sample size required. So for an alpha of 5% and power up. So this is the power of 80%. So this is how you can find the power of a test using the formula. So using the sample size of the test so using the power and the significance level now let's see how we can calculate the power of a test so the power becomes 5f minus z1 minus alpha by 2 plus delta divided by square root sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 so this is the formula that we use to calculate the power of a test. Now, so again, here delta is modulus of mu to minus mu one. So it's not going to change the value. Now, so let's see a problem. So in this problem, you have 100 OC users, 100 non-OC users available for study. And the true difference is 5 mm. And how much power would a study have assuming that the variance in the pilot study so they have given you sigma 1 they have given sigma 2 which is 18.23 and sigma 1 is 15.34 so write down the data they have so n1 is 100 sigma 1 is 15.34 n2 is 100 sigma 2 is 18.23 and they have given you a del value of 5 and then H. So use this data now. So let's use this data and find the power of the test. So consider that alpha is 0 0.05 because whenever you don't have any value of alpha, consider it to be 5%. Now, so using the data, so let me copy this data in the next slide. So this is the data that we have now so the power of the test is 5f minus z1 minus alpha by 2 plus delta divided by square root of sigma 1 square by n1 plus sigma 2 square by n2 now so substitute the values so you have 5 f. now so if you consider alpha equal to 0 0.05 so z1 minus alpha by 2 becomes 
is at 0 0.975 so which again is 1.96 so minus 1.96 plus 5 divided by square root of 15.34 square by 100 plus 18.23 square by 100 now so let's find out the answer for this data so now let's find out the data you have square root of 15.34 So you have 15.34 square plus 18.23 square so that gives you 563.64 so divide it by 100 so that gets you 5.6764 so square root of the value square root of 5.676485 and becomes 2.382 so now 5 divided by 2.38 and it gives you 2.1 plus 1 point sorry minus 1.96 that gives you 0 0.14 so that is 5 0 0.14 so now let's use the z table to determine So in the Z table, we are looking at 0 0.14. So you have 0 0.1 and you have 0 0.04. So the value is 0 0.5557. So that becomes 0 0.5557. So it becomes 55.57%. So this is the power of the test. So that becomes the power of the test. So this is how you can calculate the power of a test. So that ends the chapter on two sample inference. So in the textbook, there are many more topics. You don't need to go through all of them. So just go through the topics that are needed uh, that I have discussed in the chapter. And at the end of the chapter, there are many more problems. So try going through them and try to practice them.